welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Trojan War, Part 1, To the Most Beautiful, an adaptation of a Greek myth written for you by Daniel Hines. This is just part one of the story. Part two will be released later this week. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Trojan War, Part 1, To the Most Beautiful In the ancient days of myth, the Greek gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus were having a wedding. A king and hero named Peleus was marrying a sea nymph named Thetis, a minor goddess of the waters. Both Peleus and Thetis were beloved by all, So their wedding was the grandest party that anyone had seen for ages. There was so much good food that the giant tables groaned under the weight, and there was so much to drink you could swim in it. There was music from Apollo himself, and dancing and contests and games of all kinds. Because Peleus was a mortal, many other mortals were invited as well. King Priam of Troy was there with his sons, the princes Hector and Paris. King Menelaus of Sparta was there with his wife Helen, said to be the most beautiful mortal in all the world. Even Odysseus, the great general and king of Ithaca, was there with a table full of warriors. On and on it went. Endless kings and queens, princes and princesses, heroes and conquerors, and many more all celebrating together in the heavenly halls of Mount Olympus. It seemed that everyone important in the entire ancient world was there, except there was one invitation Zeus had neglected to send. Her name was Eris, and she was the goddess of chaos. She dressed all in black, and she had a pet snake, too, a black adder named Beris. Together, They were the mischief-makers of Greece, always causing problems no matter where they went. Sometimes Eris would try to behave, but it just wasn't in her nature. When she heard about the wedding, Eris assumed that her invitation had gotten lost in the mail. She blamed Hermes, the messenger god, and headed off to the party regardless. She knocked at the door, Beris hissing and coiling around her wrist. The guards took one look at her, their faces paled, and they went to fetch Zeus. The god of thunder arrived a moment later, his face as dark as a storm cloud. Eris, he bellowed when he arrived. I'll not have you at the party. This is a joyous celebration, and you are the goddess of chaos, a daughter of night, and a cousin to misery. A wedding is no place for someone like you. Oh, but Zeus, Eris said with a smile, I just want to celebrate with my brothers and sisters. I don't want to cause any trouble. Shh, Beris added, trying to look innocent and failing spectacularly. She was lying, of course. Eris was trouble by nature the same way Athena was wisdom and Poseidon was the sea. Mischief flowed through her blood, and a hundred wedding pranks were already tumbling through her mind. I think not, said Zeus, who was, of course, the father of all the gods and saw through her immediately. Anyone is welcome, anyone but you, Eris. Now be gone! He gestured, and a howling wind slammed the door in the goddess's face. Now, he said, turning back to the party, where is Hercules? It's time for a contest of strength. Outside the great halls of Mount Olympus, Eris skulked, which is another word for sneaking about in a troublesome, suspicious way. Have a party without me, will they? she said to Beris, already mulling over some mischief. The snake hissed back in reply. I swear, you tie a few togas to tables, you poison a couple gods, steal some priceless artifacts, and all of a sudden you don't get invited back. It's not fair. They don't kick out Poseidon when he gets salt water in the punch. 
<laughs> said Barris, nuzzling her cheek. Eris's mind was whirling now, thinking of a way she could get back and ruin the wedding for everyone. Creeping around, she went to a secret little hole in the wall she had made long ago to spy on the other gods. Inside the halls of Olympus, she could see her sisters Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite dancing to the music of Apollo's harp. The crowd had gathered around the goddesses, marveling at their grace and beauty as they seemed to float through the air. They looked ethereal, which meant delicate and light and too perfect for the world. Oh, look at us. We're so great, sneered Eris. Everyone loves us and we're invited to every party and we never once put a frog in Zeus's helmet or greased up Hermes' sandals. Oh, so fancy. Shh, agreed Barris. Eris and Barris watched the goddesses dance for a while longer and then Eris was struck by an idea. She knew that Athena and Hera and Aphrodite all considered themselves to be the most beautiful goddess, so much so that they had fought about it in the past. It was perfect. Eris went to her home and fetched an apple of shining, glowing gold. It was a magic apple from the Garden of Hesperides. There were only a handful of them in existence, and they were valued highly, even among the gods. Eris had, of course, stolen hers and was saving it for just such an occasion. Inside the walls, at the wedding, the party had moved on to contests. Hercules had won the contest of strength, and now the gods were having a bit of fun, judging between two bulls. One of the bulls belonged to Paris, a prince of a kingdom called Troy. The other bull was the god Ares, who had shapeshifted himself into a bull without telling anyone. Paris had raised a beautiful bull, but Ares was a god, and he was stunning beyond compare, all broad and strong and snorting with a fine reddish fur. Well, Paris, Zeus asked the young prince, do you think your bull has won the contest? Paris smiled and shook his head. He always tried to be fair, especially when the gods were involved, and he couldn't bring himself to lie. I'm afraid I've lost the contest, he said. As much as it pains me to say, this bull is clearly better than my own. The bull flashed back into Ares, who laughed and clapped Paris on the back. A wise choice and a wise prince. Paris looked at the god wide-eyed, and then everyone burst into laughter, Paris and Ares included. A moment later, a golden apple sailed over the wall. It flashed like the sun itself and drew every eye at the party. It landed right in the center of Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite and rolled to a stop. And then everyone could see that it had words blazing on its surface. They read, to the most beautiful. The three goddesses gazed upon the golden treasure for a moment, and then Athena spoke first. Oh, look, she said, a gift for me. A gift for me, I think you mean, said Hera. Oh, can't you two read, asked Aphrodite. It says most beautiful. It's clear the precious golden apple is meant for me. They all went to pick it up at the same time and bumped into each other. And then they started pushing and shoving and it quickly turned into a fight. Outside the walls, Eris and Barris watched and laughed as the wedding party ground to a halt. It's a gift for me, snapped Hera. So back off. No, you back off, said Athena. The golden apple is mine. You both back off snarled Aphrodite. I'm the goddess of love, and I'm the most beautiful. Enough, bellowed Zeus. Thunder punctuated his words and lightning forced across the sky. That is enough, I say. The goddesses glared up at Zeus, each still with one hand upon the apple. 
This is just another contest, Zeus said. He snapped his fingers and the apple appeared in his mighty hand. We will decide the most beautiful and she will keep the prize. And who will judge? asked Athena. Surely not you. Hera is your wife, so you'll pick her for sure. That's right, said Aphrodite. We need someone we can trust. Someone we know is fair. Everyone paused to think for a moment, and then, slowly, all eyes turned to Paris, the Prince of Troy. Me? he asked. I couldn't possibly. There must be someone else. The prince turned pale and shaky. He was a fair man, but not a brave man, and you have to be pretty brave to judge the gods. Nonsense, said Zeus. You proved yourself an excellent judge not ten minutes ago. You shall judge the beauty of my wife and daughters, and you will pick a winner. Paris nodded, too afraid to speak, and the three goddesses came to stand before him. Make your decision, Zeus said. Wait, father, said Athena. Let me speak to him first. She approached Paris. My prince, she said. I am the goddess of wisdom and war, two things a prince sorely needs. Choose me as the most beautiful, and I will give you skill with a sword and spear and a wisdom far beyond your years. Paris nodded, his eyes wide. It was an incredible offer. If she gets to speak to the prince, then so do I, said Hera. And then it was her turn to approach the Trojan prince. Paris, she said, smiling with all her charm. If you choose me as the most beautiful, I will reward you with your own kingdom. You need not be a prince while your father and older brothers are kings. You will rule. She stepped back and Paris gulped, his body trembling. His own kingdom! And all he had to do was proclaim Hera the most beautiful. He started to speak, but Aphrodite stepped forward. Oh, prince, she said, gliding to his side. I am the goddess of love, and thus I know that better than wisdom and strength, better than a kingdom, better than all else, is true love. Name me as the most beautiful, and I will give you the heart of the fairest mortal woman on all the earth. She too stepped back, and Zeus glared down. I'm getting tired of this. We have a wedding to celebrate. Make your choice. But the mood of the wedding had soured completely. The vanity of the goddesses had everyone tense, and now only Eris and her snake outside the walls were smiling. Her plan had worked better than she could have hoped. Uh, I, uh, um, stammered Paris. He looked from Athena to Hera to Aphrodite. Wisdom to a kingdom to a love. Which should he choose? He looked out over the crowd, and he saw Menelaus, the king of Sparta, and he saw the queen, Helen. She was known to all to be the most beautiful mortal woman alive, and with a sudden rush of his heart, Paris realized he could have her. Not only that, he realized he needed to have her. I choose Aphrodite, he said. Aphrodite is the most beautiful. Athena stomped, and Hera screeched, and Aphrodite held up her arms, demanding cheers from the crowd. Zeus passed her the golden apple, and she held it close to her chest, smiling wide. And now, Prince Paris, she said, your prize. She waved her hands, and Queen Helen of Sparta rose from her seat. The king Menelaus tried to rise after her, but found he couldn't move. Now you have her heart, Aphrodite said, and the queen fell into Paris's arms as though they had just been married. Her heart isn't yours to give, the king shouted. You can't do this to her. People are not prizes. I am a goddess, said Aphrodite. 
and I do as I will. Paris, said King Menelaus, that is my wife. You'd take her with the magic of the gods? Paris looked at Helen, completely enchanted by her beauty, and knew he couldn't resist her. His brother Hector came to him and hissed in his ear. Dude, what are you doing? That is the king's wife. This is madness. No, brother, said Paris. This is true love. The party erupted into shouts and curses. Tables crashed and swords rang steely into the air and brawls broke out, Greek against Trojan. Outside the walls, Eris laughed, Barris hissing along with her. That will show them to have a party without me, she said, and then she made her merry way home. Paris, shouted King Menelaus. This is your last chance. Release her from this enchantment or it will mean war between Greece and Troy. I will march the armies of Sparta, of Ithaca, and Pythia, and all the others on your kingdom. I will tear you apart brick by brick until I free my queen. Come then, said Paris, taking Helen by the hand. Come and have your war. King Menelaus charged, along with his most loyal friends, the Greek kings Odysseus and Peleus, the forgotten groom. Zeus, seeing that a battle was about to erupt in his halls, clapped his hands like thunder. In an instant, the mortals, Greek and Trojans both, were transported back to their kingdoms. Menelaus was sent back to Greece, and Paris, with Helen, was sent back to Troy. And there, summoning all of their might, both kingdoms prepared for war. To be continued. In the next episode, Achilles' Heel and the Trojan Horse. Thanks for listening. 